Hey guys, welcome to the new video and in this video we are going to set up Kafka in craft mode. Apache Kafka is a distributed streaming platform and that is the foundation of many event driven system. It allows the application to produce and consume events on the various topics with built in fault tolerant mechanism. And prior to version 2.8 of Kafka, all the Kafka instances require Zookeeper to function. And Zookeeper has been used as the metadata storage for Kafka. And it provides a way to manage those brokers, partition and task, such as providing the consensus when electing a new controller across those brokers. Kafka version 2.8 has an experimental support for running without Zookeeper which is the Kafka Raft mode, also known as Craft mode. So Craft mode was proposed in the Kafka Improvement Proposal KIP 500, where Kafka now runs as a single process and a single distributed system. And it makes it much more simpler to deploy, operate and manage Kafka instances, especially when we are running in the Kubernetes cluster. Craft mode also allows Kafka to run more easily with less number of resources and making it a much suitable choice for edge computing devices. So if you'll take a look at the diagram, so this was the previous architecture where we were having zookeepers and these zookeepers were responsible for setting up the coordination between these Kafka brokers and essentially setting up the quorum uh, between all these brokers. But in the craft mode where we have the raft consensus that is running inside the brokers and in the craft mode we don't need the zookeepers, rather the quorum is maintained by the quorum controller nodes and these nodes are configured within the Kafka broker. So for this demonstration, I'm going to set up the Kafka in the craft mode on the Kubernetes cluster. And for the demonstration part, I will be running Kubernetes in my local machine, in my local environment. So for that, I'm going to use a utility called kind, which allows me to run the Kubernetes cluster using the Docker containers. So let me open my terminal here. So here, and uh, I'm in already in the repository. So if you see this, this is the Kubernetes development repository, and I will leave a link for this repository in the description. So let me uh, first create a kind cluster. And this is going to create a one node kind cluster. And meanwhile, let me show you the repository as well. So this is the code repository. And uh, here, if you will see, I have two folders. First one is the Kubernetes and second one is the Kafka Node.js app. So basically this is the client application which has two scripts. One is for the producer and second one is the for, for the consumer part. And uh, if you take a look on this Kubernetes folder, again we have uh, one more folder which is a Docker. And here uh, I have kept a Docker file and one more file which is entrypoint.sh. And first we will be going to create a Docker image for our uh, uh, Kafka and then we have this craft uh, we have this Kafka.yaml which is basically uh, the YAML manifest that contains uh, uh, that will help us in setting the Kafka in the craft mode so it has that uh, stateful set and then it has the namespace then it has the services and then it has the persistent volume and persistent volume claims as well so let me check if the yeah so the cluster is up and running and if I do kubectl get pods I should see nothing yeah so now first step is we have to build the docker image for our Kafka in craft so let me build the docker image so first I will go to this kubernetes directory here I will go into this kubernetes directory and here I will build the Docker image. So again, I will go to the Docker folder. And here, let me just build the Docker image. Yeah, so the Docker image is ready. Now I can simply load this Docker image into my kind cluster because uh, this image is running locally and I haven't uh, pushed this image to any uh, container registry so I will simply load this image into the kind cluster so kind load docker image and then I have to give that image name so let me just run this so our image is ready uh, like uh, meanwhile it is getting loaded to the 
kind cluster let's go and see this entry point sh file and basically this uh, file takes some inputs uh, when we are when we are actually setting up the stateful set we pass some in input in the form of environment variable and based on those input it tried to create the uh, uh, the various property files like server dot properties and uh, uh, and also set up some uh, uh, properties in the controller dot properties file uh, which helps us in setting up the service name and the node ids as well yeah so it got loaded now let's uh, see this kafka dot yaml file and again first uh, first detail that we have in this file is for the namespace so we are creating a namespace with name kafka craft Second, we are setting up the persistent volume, and this is a uh, uh, this uh, this uh, host based uh, volume. So it is storing the data in my local machine, and then I am setting the persistent volume claim. And this persistent volume claim is being used by my stateful set uh, to store the data. And after that, I have the service uh, which is the Kafka service and uh, note that i am using the cluster ip as none which means that it is a headless service and i am exposing the port 9092 which is the kafka broker port uh, so that my client application can access uh, the kafka node then we have the stateful set and here uh, if you take a look uh, carefully on the environment section we are passing some environment variables like the number of replicas that we want to have and this based on this number it is going to create uh, the configuration uh, in the broker itself and remember that this replica and the replica in the stateful set they are come they both are di uh, different like if you will uh, skip this part then uh, even though you are creating the five replicas but it will like uh, the script will not be able to set up those uh, properties correctly so you have to specify the replicas here then we are specifying the service and this is the my service name if you will see here this was the service kafka service and same i have to pass here because uh, when we are setting up the controller node there we need the complete uh, DNS name and this will help us in resolving the uh, DNS name then we have the namespace as well again this is used for the uh, DNS part that we need a fully qualified domain name so that's why we are passing the namespace here as well and then we are passing the share directory again this is the directory uh, where our Kafka logs will be preserved and this is again used in the same script uh, that will write the storage location for our Kafka let's run this manifest so it has uh, created all the uh, objects and now let me open the lens id or let's do here let's do kubectl get pods uh, in the kafka kafka craft namespace so here you can see we have all the five instances that are up and running and uh, let's go inside um, one of these and let's uh, see some of the properties there so i have the lens id here now if we just change the namespace here to kafka craft uh, we can go into any of the namespace and here we can just run some scripts uh, to make sure that our kafka cluster is up and running and all the nodes are here so let's go to the directory where we have our scripts and i have already written some uh, commands uh, those commands i am going to run uh, there so basically this is going to return as the cluster id and uh, it has returned the cluster id so this is the cluster id that our kafka cluster is using then now let's see the log directories so this is going to return as the log directories that are uh, used by all the brokers let me clear up this so here you can see uh, it has returned us uh, the brokers as well as their log directory so if you see that the broker 0 is using this as the log directory then we have the broker 1 which is using this as the log directory 
for storing all the Kafka messages and then we have the broker 2 which is using this as the log directory so similarly we can see that all the five brokers they have their log directories and we can see that there is no error like the error property is set as null which means that there is no error let's try to create one topic as well so here I am passing the topic name as test1 and the partition is 3 and the replication factor is 2. So it created the topic and uh, we can see the topic using this list command that is going to list all the topics. So here we should see one topic. Yeah, so here we can see we have one topic and now let's try to create one more uh, one more topic with uh, this time with replication factor as uh, that is more than our number of nodes so since we have five nodes so i'm going to pass the replication factor as six and i'm doing this uh, just to showcase you that you cannot get replication factor more than the number of brokers you have so if i create this topic which is topic uh, with the name test2 and the replication factor as six uh, we should see some failure message here and you can see that uh, we got the message that unable to replicate the partition six times and there are only five reusable brokers so whenever you are creating a kafka cluster uh, make sure that you are passing uh, uh, the number of replicas should be always less than equal to the number of kafka brokers let me run the same command again but this time i'm going to pass the replication factor as five and this time it should uh, create the topic and if we just list all the topics that we have so we should see both the topics test one and test two now uh, we can uh, run our application as well so i have created one node.js application this one and this is basically a simple consumer and uh, producer uh, kind of application where producer is sending some messages to the kafka cluster and uh, consumer is consuming those messages so let me just make you walk through this script so here i'm uh, uh, getting the kafka uh, broker address from the environment variable and then we have a couple of functions here so if i show you uh, we have some functions uh, related to get temperature values get humidity values get sound values and get flow values and also this is the main function which is running and it is generating some random number and based on the range of that random number we are generating the uh, uh, we are generating the data and also uh, it is uh, it this script is pushing the data to five different topics so let me show you that uh, this is the first function and here you can see the topic is uh, temperature and it is pushing some random data then we have the humidity function which return which is generating some dump data and that uh, data is going to be pushed onto this humidity topic then we have the sound uh, function which is pushing that data to the sound topic and then we have the uh, last function which is the get flow values which is pushing the uh, data to the flow topic so uh, and we are just running this function uh, run function at an interval of two seconds so every two seconds uh, this function is going to uh, invoked and it is going to create some random data uh, on the random topic and then we have the consumer dot j script and this script is uh, basically we are setting up the kafka instance we are passing the kafka address then we are basically uh, creating a consumer group and i am naming that consumer group as test consumer and then this uh, consumer is subscribed to only temperature topic so this consumer is only going to get the message from uh, this particular topic not from all the topics L lastly let's see the environment file so here in the environment file we are setting the uh, fully qualified domain name for our kafka broker one so here you can see i'm passing the uh, uh, instance id or the pod id pod name and then we have the complete uh, service name here followed by the port we have the docker file here as well and this docker file is uh, just simply creating the packaging of the application and then it is not running any script rather it is sleeping down so scripts we are going to manually run by ourselves and let me uh, create this docker image and then 
uh, we are going to load this docker image into our client cluster and then we are going to start the application so let me clear this let me go to the appropriate folder and here let me just run docker build so this is the image that i'm going to create so image is ready now i can just simply load this image into my uh, kind cluster so kind load docker image and then you have to pass your image name let's run this Yeah, so the image is loaded into the kind cluster. Now we can simply run our application, which is this app.yaml. And here you can see that I'm using that same image, image and uh, the name of the application is uh, Kafka app. So here you can see the name of the application. Let me just quickly run this. So this should create a deployment with one pod. Uh, let's verify this. So here you can see we have one pod and now let's get inside this pod and let's run those producer and consumer script. So if I go to the lens ID and let me just close this one. Let me change the namespace. So here we should have the script which is producer dot js and consumer dot js and let me run the producer dot js first so node producer dot js and this is going to push the data onto the topics and by the way these topics were not created uh, previously so the sdk itself is going to create these topics and then pushing the data onto these topics so here you can see that it has started pushing up the uh, data into various topics like it is pushing the data onto humidity topic then sometime on the sound topic then uh, we will see data in the temperature topic as well yes yeah, so here we can see we have that data in the uh, temperature topic as well here yeah. so now uh, let's run the consumer script as well so now let's open a new instance of this terminal and there we will be going to running that consumer script so let me so here let's run the consumer script so which is node consumer.js and this should uh, uh, this script is running uh, listening for the messages on the temperature topic so we should see some data coming here yeah, so here you can see we got all the data that was pushed onto the temperature topic so here you can see the topic name is temperature and then we have uh, we are getting the partition values as well as well as we are getting the offset uh, message offset so here you can see offset is six then seven then eight so we are getting all the data here so uh, this was pretty much it for this video hope you like this video and if you did like this video then please give a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and i will see you in the next one